Niemand anderer ist mit dem Namen des Entrepreneurship und das Öffnen des Entrepreneurship für viele, niemand anderes verkörpert das mehr als Professor Yunus. Wenn es möglich ist, in einem Land wie Bangladesch und inzwischen nach seinem Modell in vielen Entwicklungsländern Entrepreneurship zu machen, für diejenigen, die keine Ausbildung hatten, für diejenigen, die in der Gesellschaft benachteiligt sind, für Menschen, die überhaupt keine Infrastruktur haben zum Entrepreneurship. Wenn das möglich ist, und es ist möglich und es ist vorgeführt, nicht nur in Bangladesch, dann müsste es eigentlich bei uns auch möglich sein. Es ist mir eine ganz besondere Freude und Ehre, dass Professor Yunus zu uns in diesem Workshop kommt. Professor Yunus, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you here with us. It's your turn. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's good to be back again. I was here last year and uh, I made so many friends. It's good to reconnect with all the friends. I hope, I hope you're not getting tired of me. <laughs> But I love it because of the interest that you take in the subject. Not everybody pays attention to what I say. But you do. <laughs> That's what inspires me, that uh, I'm not alone talking about these issues. And the basic issue that I have been raising was not right away looked at as a kind of something related to entrepreneurship. It was not. My initial attempt was to try to protect the poor people from the loan sharks. So I was looking more at the loan shark and the poor people relationship. And I saw how tiny little money can control the life of people. So seeing this in the village next door to the university campus, It occurred to me that I can delink them. I can cut that relationship between, lend, between the loan sharks and the poor people. And it doesn't cost much to do that. My first attempt was $27 from my own pocket, given to 42 people to free them from the loan sharks. I thought it's such a simple thing, but so important for so many people. So I just went ahead, I didn't think twice. But it created a ripple effect, which caught me in. People looked at me as if I have done some kind of a miracle by doing this kind of work. Then my second thought was, if you can make so many people so happy with such a small amount of money, why shouldn't you do more of it? So that's my second push in my mind, that this is what I should do. And then I went to the bank, bank was reluctant, and that's a long story. Finally, I offered myself as a guarantor to the bank. I was trying to link the bank with the people rather than traditional link between the people and the loan shark. And when I could finally got it done by offering myself as a guarantor, I gave this loan to the people in the village and I felt very happy that I finally opened the door of the bank. I thought now this will grow from there. But that's, it was not that easy because bank was still very reluctant. Two things I brought against the banks when I was trying to campaign against the bankers in the country, in Bangladesh. This is back in 1975, 76. 
First complaint that I made, banking system is wrong because it leaves out the people who need the money most. I thought it's a logical thing. Banks should prioritize the people who don't have the money. But they do this strange thing. They do the opposite. They give the money to people who already have lots of money and deny the money people, to the people who don't have money. So this was my first objection. Second objection, they don't lend money to the women. Not even 1% of the borrowers of all the banks in Bangladesh happen to be women. So my decision when I began, I exclusively focus on the poor people, number one. Number two, half the borrowers in my program must be women. So with that idea, I go to the people to give loans to the poor people, and I invite women to take money from us. Women say, no, don't give it to me. I don't know anything about money. So the more I try to persuade, more my students try to persuade them, this is, this is what you can do with money and your income. No, I never touched money in my life. I don't want to touch money, it's trouble. I don't want to create trouble for my family. Because for them, borrowing means loan shark. That's the traditionally they have learned. So they don't want to go anywhere near it because this will destroy their life. Here we try to explain we are not loan sharks, we are bank, we are going to do with this. No way. And some will say, oh, you give it to my husband. He's the one who handles money. I don't handle money. After several months, my students got very frustrated. They started talking, said, well, maybe we should skip the women part. Because they themselves are saying that we don't know how to use money and we don't want to take money. Why should we force something on people? So I thought about it and I explained to them, I said, look, we are not forcing anything to anybody. When you go and explain, and woman says, no, I don't want to take the money, I'm afraid of money, give it to my husband. Always remember, this is not her voice. This is the voice of the history. History that created her that way. It's not in one generation. It's a generation after generation after generation. She is told she is no good. She is not good for anything. She creates trouble. She is a woman. Woman is trouble. And that's what she believes. She is very apologetic. She grows, as a, grows up in the family in a very apologetic way. I'm sorry I'm a woman. I'm sorry I'm a girl. And she doesn't want to disrupt anything, raise any question. She doesn't want to draw attention to her. This money will draw attention to her. She's afraid of that. Then they said, then should we abandon it? I said, no, that's the point. We don't abandon it. We have to be very patient. We have to be going back again and again and earn their confidence and peel off their fear layer by layer because it's the centuries of fear, all the crust around them. When finally we succeeded in unfolding one person by taking all these fears, if she says, let me try, and if she tries, and if she's successful, neighbors around her will notice her. Say, oh, she's doing this. This is not as bad as we thought. Maybe I should do it. And she will do it. And another person will do it. And this is the process that we are waiting for. So be patient. It took us six years to come to that point when we have equal number of borrowers as men and women. For six years we pursued it, we never gave up. So it's, you, if